Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another Adventure in Pure Mathematics. You might have seen my video playlist on tensor products in linear algebra, where we looked at the very, very important notion of tensor products of vector spaces. But the notion of tensor products actually goes m much, much further than that. And in fact, you can take tensor products of modules. And this is very useful more generally in algebra. OK, so let's see how that works. So to talk about modules, what do we need? We need to look at some sort of a ring. So we'll fix a ring R here. And the inputs we'll have are two R modules, M and N. OK, so what's a rather interesting in this case, and is a little bit peculiar about the setup here, is that this module M here, which is an R module, actually has to be a right R module. So we put a little R on the right here to show that the action of scalars is on the right. The module here, N, however, is rather different. That's going to be a left R module. So that's why we have a subscript uh, R on the left there. OK, so we're going to mimic the construction that we saw for tensor products of vector spaces. OK, so the tensor product will turn out to be an abelian group. So what we're going to start off with is firstly look at the Cartesian product of M with N. OK, so that's something that we saw in the case of tensor products of vector spaces as well. And we just look at, in this case, the free abelian group generated by it. So the types of things that you'll see inside there are basically just Z linear combinations of elements inside here. So things of the form uh, sums of, uh, you have integers, say, A, M, N. And they're going to be the coefficients of uh, pairs M, N, M inside M, N inside N, this N here. And this is going to be a finite sum. So it's a set of all these finite sums like that. And of course, this is clearly an abelian group, and it's the free abelian group generated by M cross N. OK, so let's now look at the tensor product M tensor R, N. OK, so what is that? OK, so this is going to be an abelian group. And we're going to start with this free abelian group here. And what we're going to do is we're going to quotient out by some subgroup Y. OK, so this is very similar to what we saw in the case of tensor products of vector spaces. OK, so what uh, are we going to factor out by? So this is uh, basically the same types of things that you saw for vector spaces. OK, so firstly, we want to have um, the distributive law holding, OK? So we'll factor out by elements of the following form. If you have m, m prime inside m, you can look at m plus m prime comma uh, n. So n is inside n here. And you subtract from that uh, m comma n and m prime comma n. OK, so things of this form, this is a z linear combination of pairs inside here. So this is an element of x. And similarly, if you have uh, sums of things in the n variable, so m comma n plus n prime minus m comma n minus m comma n prime. Okay, things of this form should also uh, be in this subgroup Y. And lastly, what you have, uh, you have things which involve the ring. Okay, so we haven't used the module structure of M and N as yet. Okay, so let's do that. So what you do is you look at the following difference of elements: M R comma N minus M comma R N. Okay. So once you have this, uh, what you will find is that uh, you'll have a subgroup generated by these elements, y. And this quotient, abelian group, is going to be the tensor product of m with n. And as usual, uh, we use some notation. So what does m tensor n denotes the image, image of this m comma n in m tensor n? OK, great. So that's the construction of the tensor product of modules. And I want to show you this very, very simple example, which shows you how it's quite different, actually, from tensor products of vector spaces. There's a lot more interesting phenomena that can happen once you relax the criterion that this ring, uh, this is just a ring as opposed to a field. OK, so let's look at Z mod 2 tensor Z mod Z3. OK, so this is generated by elements of the form, well, basically these elementary tensors. OK, so let's have a look at um, M tensor N, which is inside here. OK, so what can we do? OK, so inside here, uh, one thing that you should note is that we can, of course, multiply M uh, by 3. And 3 is a uh, unit inside Z mod 2. So this is the same as M times 3 tensor n, okay? 3 times this m, 
okay, is going to be the same as m inside z mod 2. Okay, great. Okay, so remember, you have this uh, is in our subgroup y, so inside the tensor product, this is going to be, the image of this is going to be 0. So that means that mr tensor n is equal to m tensor rn. So we can move this scalar 3 here across over to the other side. So that's just m tensor uh, 3n. Now, of course, 3n here is equal to what? So 3, if you multiply anything in Zen mod 3 by 3, what do you get? You get 0. So this is m tensor 0. So this is generated by elements of the form m tensor n, and they also all equal m tensor 0. And I claim this is e actually equal to 0. So why is that? So let's have a look and see why that is actually equal to 0. And the uh, uh, reason is quite simple. So m tensor 0 is equal to, well, we're going to use some of these properties. So we can write 0, of course, as 0 plus 0. OK. And using the fact that we've quotiented out by uh, this relation here, OK, that means that in terms of uh, tensors, m tensor a sum, like m tensor a sum, is the same as the sum of these two, uh, the images of these two, which are these two elementary tensors. So this is m tensor 0 plus m tensor 0. OK, so when you look at this, uh, what do you find? Rather interestingly, you can cancel the m tensor 0 from the m tensor 0 here, these two terms. And then what you see, you'll see that when you cancel these two terms, uh, you get m tensor 0 is equal to 0. <laughs> so that means that this abelian group is actually generated by well, all these elementary tensors, but they're all 0. So that implies that, rather curiously, z mod 2, if you tensor it over z um, with z mod 3, that's actually just equal to 0. I next want to tell you about the many nice properties that tensor products of modules have and the way they mimic the properties of tensor products of vector spaces. So the first one that allows you to prove many facts about tensor products is the universal property, property here. Now the universal property for vector spaces involves bilinear maps. It tells you that bilinear maps coming out of a product of vector spaces, they correspond to linear maps coming out of the tensor product. Uh, in this case here, we can't talk about bilinear maps, but there's something very close, okay? And unfortunately, the terminology for this is not standardized, okay? It's the notion of an R midlinear map. Okay, so suppose now we have some abelian group Z, okay? And we're going to look at maps uh, from M cross N, okay? So M was our right R module, N was our left R module. Uh, there's a map from here to Z, okay? We're going to say when this type of function is going to be R midlinear, okay? So what that does that mean? Well, just as in the case of bilinear maps, you can look at phi of m, n. That's the way we'll write the function. We can fix one of these, m or n. And if it's a group homomorphism in the other one, so it's additive in the other one, then we'll say that this is going to be, um, that's the first condition that you want to be R midlinear. And the next condition that you want is the following one. And this is the one which involves the uh, scalar multiplication by r, okay? So what is that, okay? So it's the following one here, okay? Suppose now you have an element r inside r here. Well, what you can do is you can evaluate phi at mr, n, okay? So this is an element of big M. And you can also evaluate phi at m, r, n. And if these happen to be the same for all r and all m and n, and it's, this phi is a group homomorphism in each of m and n individually, then we say uh, this uh, function here is R midlinear. Okay, so that's the analog of bilinear maps. Okay? And the theorem that we have uh, is just exactly the same universal property that we saw for vector spaces. Okay, so what's the, that? Okay, so firstly, we have a map. So there's a, a universal type of R midlinear map. Okay, when you're given this m and n, and what's that one there? Uh, there's a map from m cross n to the abelian group the tensor product, m tensor rn. And it just sends the pair mn to the elementary tensor m tensor n like that. Okay, So that's the natural thing. And that's what we saw for tensor uh, products of vector spaces as well. Okay, So this is going to be r midlinear. And it's quite easy to check this fact. It's the same as the proof for vector spaces. Furthermore, if you have any linear map from m tensor r n to z, okay, you can always compose that with this one here. So you go from here, m tends to n all the way to z, that's the composite psi, psi ta, tau. And since you're composing a, a midlinear map with a linear uh, 
uh, an additive map here, that turns out to be R midlinear as well. Okay? And what's really nice is that actually every R midlinear map from M cos N to Z arises uniquely in this way. Okay? So given such a map, you can always find this uh, linear, uh, additive group homomorphism, so group homomorphism from M tensor R N to Z, such that it is the composite of this tau, this universal R midlinear map, with this additive map here. Okay? And that's the universal property. Okay? So it's quite easy to prove. You do exactly the same thing as you did in the case of tensor products of vector spaces. Okay? And this gets used in lots and lots of different places, and I want to show you just one place. Okay? So um, let's have a look at the following. And this is the functoriality okay, that you see. So what's functoriality about? Okay, this happens when you now not just look at a, a pair of R modules like this, but you also talk about morphisms. Okay? So let's consider a morphism for the M variable. So you have a morphism of right R modules from MR to MR prime, and a morphism uh, of left R modules from uh, Rn to Rn prime. Okay, so this is left R linear, this one's right R linear. And what do we want to show? We want to show that this gives you a group homomorphism. So where does it go? So this is be phi tensor psi, that's the notation from it. And it'll go from the tensor product of the domains here, m tensor Rn. You can also do the tensor product of the codomains, m prime tensor Rn prime, and all map like that. Okay, and it's quite easy to describe what this uh, is. Okay, so as usual, this is generated by the elementary tensors. So if I tell you where these go, then that uh, will define what this map is. And where does it go? So you just apply the phi to this m, so this is phi of m, and you apply the psi to this n, psi of n. So it maps this elementary tensor here to this elementary tensor over here. Okay, so uh, let's just check check uh, this is well defined. And how do you check that this is well defined? Well, you want to show there's a group homomorphism, an additive map coming out of this tensor product. So I just have to apply the universal property to that. So we, all we have to do is check, just verify that beta, if you now go from the uh, product from m cross n to m prime cross tensor R n prime, which maps this, well, it's the one that should give you this, so this should be m n gets mapped to 5 m tensor psi of n. Okay? If we show this is R midlinear, we're done. Okay? So that's all we need to do, to show that this map here is R midlinear, and then when you apply this universal property, you know, these R midlinear maps, okay, what do they correspond to? They correspond to linear maps in this way. Uh, okay, so these additive uh, homomorphisms coming out of this tensor product, okay? And this is the one that will give you this map here, okay? So all you have to do is just check these two properties, okay? I won't check both of them, I don't have quite the space, so I'll just check this uh, second one over here, and then you'll see what happens, okay? So let's just check uh, beta of mRn. That equals, so you just apply, uh, what is this map? Beta, you apply phi to the first variable here, phi of mR and you tense it with psi of the second variable, psi of n. Okay, and then what do you find? Well, remember this is phi, and phi is a homomorphism of right R module, so you can pull the R out. So this is phi of m times R tensor psi of n. Okay, and remember we're working in the tensor product here, so you can move the scalar R across the tensor symbol, okay? So that's the key point that you have. This is one of the relationships that you have. So this is phi of m tensor r psi n. And now you can pop this r inside. And once you pop that r inside, this is phi of m tensor psi of r n. So that's just, of course, just beta of m comma r n. Okay. And that verifies this uh, property here. And you can similarly verify that uh, this beta is additive in M, and it's also additive in this N here. 
And once you have these two facts, okay, then you've verified the condition that this is R midlinear, and so the universe probably tells you that this is a well-defined group homomorphism on these tensor products, and that gives you the functoriality. Okay, so this is a very classical sort of application, application of the universal property. We also saw for tensor products of vector spaces other uses for the universal property. Okay, so for example, one of the things that you can show is that you have a distributive law. Okay, so when you have a tensor product, okay, like you have a tensor product here, of course, in one of the variables you can ask for a direct sum of right R modules. Okay, and see is that related to the uh, tensor products of the direct summons with this n? Okay, and it turns out that that is true. Okay, there is a distributive law, and that just follows straight from the universal properties. So in this video, we've seen that tensor products of modules are, are very, very similar to tensor products of vector spaces. They have very, very similar um, properties, and in particular, the universal property holds, and so does functoriality. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.